It, it's really astonishing the number of potential users that Graphene has. I mean, here at the Institute, ICN2, they're working on many different applications from satellite communications or, right. or biosensors. Right? And I, I would say that you were involved in a crucial step in the, in the development of the whole field, talking about growing large areas of mm -hmm. high-quality graphene. Right. That really was a trigger for the field, right? For <laughs> imagining potential, potential applications. When I started working on graphene and I realized the uh, level of technology, very crude, you know, exfoliating uh, pieces of uh, graphite onto silicon wafers and so forth. I thought there has to be a better way than this. And so I said, we have to develop a, a technique to grow large area, monolayer graphite or uh, graphene uh, so that uh, engineers, so that scientists, so that you know, whoever chemists can develop new products using uh, these large areas because exfoliating is very time consuming, it's very small areas. Developing a single layer large area was absolutely crucial. And so, and it turns out that we were able to do that. Graphene uh, by CBD gave rise to a lot of different applications. It looks like science and technology are really interlinked in the nano world. Right, because right, you, right. You, you can study the material if you don't build it, and you right. can make the applications if you don't understand the material. So, right, right, right. Uh, you, you've been in the interface <laughs> of trying to bring the two right, worlds to, right. together. What's, yeah. what's your approach to do that? So the approach is, since I come from industry, um, and, and I, I've been working a lot with the professors, I always try to motivate them. And the motivation is, is funding, okay? There's no funding without products. Without the products, we cannot reinvest in a fundamental understanding of anything. And so we cannot uh, sustain just uh, uh, research. We have to have a motivation. We have to have a need, right? And, and so that's, that's the way I approach it, even from a personal perspective. Yeah. I always have to justify, why am I doing this? You know, I'm not doing this just for, for fun. It would be nice just to be able to do it for fun, but that's not the way the world works. Yeah. The graphene flagship, the European project, is really focused on accelerating these applications for graphene. And I've been recently told there are already nice collaborations emerging like Airbus looking for improving their building materials with graphene. How do you see the value and progress of this project? In general, I think it's very healthy for the flagship members to collaborate with a European uh, companies and, and uh, research organizations or development organizations because that's one way of bringing graphene uh, uh, research and development to production and basically uh, create jobs within, within Europe. The collaboration with industries like Airbus uh, and, and w like Nokia, for example, or BASF and, and, and other uh, organizations within Europe that uh, could bring graphene from the research and development stage to, uh, to the production, I think is very healthy and I encourage it a lot. I'm a member of the Strategic Advisory Council and I always try to encourage uh, the, uh, all of the members of the flagship to, to uh, collaborate with industry because that's the only way that we can, again, provide the feedback, the, the feedback funding for future technologies or future advancements even in uh, graphene or 2D materials in general. And it seems like graphene has this, this uh, big pressure on it mm. and it's not a pressure for researchers to to, to publish or even patent, but of finding, of creating, a, get, getting into the market, mm -hmm, finding mm -hmm. that killer app right, right, that right. can show that we can build a whole <laughs> industry around graphene. Mm -hmm. Do you think that pressure is good for uh, research? I, I think that pressure in, in this area is, al is, is always good because uh, we uh, invent on, on pressure. Uh, I think uh, that uh, that's probably the only way because if, if there's no pressure, there's no requirement, there's no need. If there's no need, you know, people tend to, to relax. You know, after World War II, uh, the, uh, Europe kind of flourished, right? Why? Because there was a need and so there was a lot of excitement. And so I think the same thing is true for, for uh, any uh, tech, new technology development. And graphene is probably perhaps in that stage where you have to create this excitement, you have to create this need, you have to create the, the pressure to be able to you know, uh, compete with uh, Asia, to, with the US, with uh, you know, Japan, Korea, you know, uh, China.
how, how do you see the different approaches? You mentioned AGL, you mentioned the States and Europe. There mm -hmm. are key players <coughs> in the game, but right. maybe their approach is different? I think that the US tends to be probably more practical. Uh, Europe so far has dedicated a lot of resources to, uh, to research. Uh, basic understanding of graphene, of 2D materials, and so forth. I think you need to, to go one step uh, you know, uh, further and go to the development phase and hopefully engage companies uh, to uh, do the development of uh, new products uh, using graphene. Asia uh, is, is, is different. It's probably more applied. Or at least China is more applied at this stage of the game, although I think they do a lot of you know, very good uh, research. But I think that they are the manufacturing kind of arm of the world, right, because of the cost uh, structure they have. And what if we focus specifically on Catalonia? Do you think Catalonia has the chance to be a leading role in this quest? You know, based on what I've learned about Catalonia, what I see around and so forth, it seems to me that Catalonia uh, is a, uh, has a very entrepreneurial spirit. And so just based on that, I think that Catalonia not only has an opportunity, but also uh, has it, uh, an innate uh, characteristic of uh, uh, playing, uh, being able to play a leading role in anything that they want to do, and uh, whether it's graphene or 2D materials or, or uh, other technologies. And so I think that uh, Catalonia has a, an opportunity to play a critical role, no question about that. Yeah. Traditionally, materials grow in three dimensions. In this particular case, they were growing in two dimensions, which is really very interesting. And so we just grow one atom at a time, just like one would crochet. It was an amazing feeling because it was beautiful, it was simple, and, and we were able to uh, explain the whole uh, process of two-dimensional growth of graphene on copper uh, that no one uh, had observed before.